Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we celebrate this Sunday in Lent, the Lord wants to bestow the gift of the Holy Spirit and the comfort many. We are blessed to witness that. Maybe the opportunity for all of us to renew the gift of the Holy Spirit in our own lives and to see if we have been really following the Spirit of God. Let us now be mindful of our sins so to prepare ourselves to celebrate worthily these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have laid a sin in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the blessed memory of reversion of all the ancients and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. the human race to yourself in a wonderful way when we pray but with prompt devotion and eager faith the Christian people may hasten towards the solemn celebrations to come through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever Amen. reading from the book of Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have removed the reproach of Egypt from you. While the Israelites were encamped in Gilgal on the plains of Jericho, they celebrated the Passover on the evening of the 14th of the month. On the day after the Passover, they ate of the produce of the land in the form of unleavened cakes and parched grain. On that same day, after the Passover, on which they ate of the produce of the land, the manna ceased. No longer was there manna for the Israelites, who that year ate of the yield of the land of Canaan. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. And all this is from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them Jesus addressed this parable. A man had two sons, and the youngest son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your state that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. And he longed to eat the spill of the pods on which the swine fell, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hard workers have more than enough food to eat, but here am I dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hard workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven against you. I no longer deserve, deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, Quickly bring the fine robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fat and cup and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast. 
because this child mind was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been set, had been out in the field and on his way back as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, your brother has returned and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all those years I served you, and at once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughtered the fat and cow. He said to him, My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You remain standing. Will the candidates for confirmation uh, stand as your name is called and remain standing? Nathan Askan. Javan Ruhr. Olivia Garcia. Daniel Hernandez. Arian Hernandez Blanco. Michael Kaler, Alexa Criovas, Adrian Rivera, Michael Rivera, Madison Russell, Elena Turk, Graciela Gonzalez, Belinda Medina. Most Reverend Archbishop Gustavo, the parish of the Church of the Good Shepherd presents these candidates for the sacrament of confirmation. Those who know them judge them to be sincere in their desire. They have heard the word of Christ in the assembly of the Church and have attempt, attempted to shape their conduct accordingly. They have shared in the fellowship and prayer of their brothers and sisters. Now I wish to inform you and all who are here present of our community's decision to call them to confirmation. Each candidate is accompanied by a sponsor and it is my privilege, my pleasure to present these candidates to you. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, today we, in the midst of Lent, 
and with so many things that are going on in the world, we rejoice because God is good and the gift of the Holy Spirit, what you, confirmant, are going to receive, will be the spiritual seal by which you will be conformed to Christ and will be made more fully members of his church. So this gift of the Spirit will lead you into a transformation in your life as a follower of Christ in the Catholic Church. For Christ himself, anointed by the Holy Spirit in baptism, he received from John, if you recall, the Jordan River, was sent forth for the work of his ministry to pour out on earth the fire of the same Spirit. So therefore, you who are already baptized will now receive the power of the Holy Spirit and be signed with the cross of Jesus on your foreheads. You, mu you must bear witness to his passion and resurrection. You should be never ashamed that Jesus is your Lord and your Savior. And you have to proclaim that to the world. Building up the community by strengthening your personal relationship with the Lord and your bonds of unity and love with everyone around you. Jesus welcomed the sinner and helped them to restore their relationships to God and to the community. So it's not one or the other. The Holy Spirit will lead you to connect better with God and with others. Because that's the Spirit of Jesus the Lord. The story of the prodigal son comes after the complaint of the religious leadership about Jesus' association with sinners and especially fellowship at table, where all were welcome. You have heard sometimes that God is good with those who are good. I think the statement is incomplete. God is good to all people. He cannot but be good. That's why that parable. Sinners are welcome. He loves them. That's a strong, that is a fact, the parable of the prodigal son, that is better known as a parable of the generous, merciful Father who welcomes everyone. So the religious leaders had harsh judgment of Jesus and of the sinners because Jesus was eating with them, Jesus was connecting with them, Jesus was available to them, not only to the good. It can come to our minds also when Jesus said, the last shall be first. What is the difference between accepting the sinner and condoning the sin? The story is not really about the son, 
But about the father, there was a man who had two sons. That's how the story started. It is about what it takes to maintain relationships and restore them when they have been broken. The younger son is portrayed in the worst possible light. He is wishing his father dead so that he can have the money. This is a complete break with his relationship with his own father. He is truly lost. The son's change of mind was not due to a change of heart, but to the threat of hunger. There are physical limits of what we can do, and when we reach the limits, then we must take action. Is that true repentance? Also, the younger son goes to a foreign land and ends up tending pigs. The story presents the son as a repulsive as possible to those listening to Jesus. As great is the sin and the sinner, so even greater is the mercy of God. Sometimes when we think that we are good, we are so good, we don't need God. We really don't, because we feel that we are good, we are great, everything is fine. The story is as much about the mercy of God as it is about repentance. change in the heart. In this case, the repentance, the repentance leads to feasting as an image of the heavenly banquet. The threat of physical hunger leads the son to repentance and action which leads him to the feast he did not anticipate. And he is finally restored totally to the family and to the community he offended. My son was dead and now is alive. Here I can see parents, grandparents. I'm sure that you wish that if there is a member in your family that has gone astray for whatever reason. I'm sure you pray for that individual. And you wish that individual, that member of your family, to return into a better relationship. My son was dead and now he's alive. There is a complete reversal, which only comes through God's mercy. The lost can be found. It's powerful, it's beautiful. It's so real. The community was involved because the son has broken laws and traditions that were sacred to them. And the father had to protect his son from the threat of the villagers as they had been offended by his actions as well. Our sin is an offense not just against God, but also against the community. There is no such like Nobody saw me committing a sin. If they see you, they saw you, they didn't see you, the point is that you broke that relationship. With God, 
and with others. Let's call upon the Holy Spirit. <laughs> That came right on. <laughs> so the son had to be restored, not only to his father, but also to the community. That is why the father humiliates himself by running to the son something that a dignified person will not do. He was protecting his son as well as showing love. And the father called the community to repair broken bonds. The son did not re repeat his rehearsed speech. He possibly realized this was not about money, but about a relationship. How is our relationship with the Lord? How is our relationship with others? The son could never repay in money what he, he had been broken. And then the father makes an awesome gesture to show that the son is not only welcomed back, but also given full status as his son. It is also about being judgmental, as represented by the older brother. Maybe he has a point. It may have been acceptable for him to accept the brother, but not to a feast. This picture when we have said, oh, I would be nice to her, but we have to leave quickly. <laughs> he saw the difference. He said, how come that my brother will have a feast? And for me, just to receive some form of bread and water punishment, he needs some kind of penance. It is the older son who was now lost. His judgmental attitude blinded him to, to his father's love. His attitude left him outside the feast and also outside the family and the community. The older son had made himself not as a son, but a higher hand. A, an entirely different relationship to his father. He only saw his relationship with his father as one of obligation, duty, and obedience, instead of a sharing life in love and mercy. He was also a sinner, but an unrepentant sinner. One son think, thinks he can save himself, while the other knows he cannot. The father responds to the older son's resentments with, Everything I have is yours. Everything I have is yours. The older brother never realized the generosity of the father and could not respond with the same generosity. The parable does not have a happy ending. We are left not knowing if the older son or the older brother entered the banquet. We don't know if the family was reunited. 
So we are forced to ask ourselves what we would do if we were any one of the three. What would you do? I believe sometimes we are like Father, other times we are like the younger son, sometimes we are like the older son. The sacred chrism, the holy oil I will use to anoint you, confirmandly, signifies the anointment that Jesus received from the Father and which he passes on to us, to you. With it, you will be empowered to imitate the mercy of the Father. Your heart will also be softened to receive the love of the Father. Like the Son did. And like the Apostles of Pentecost, you will receive the fire of God's love. You will be sent to set the world ablaze without fire. No matter if they are good or not that good. If they are sinners or not. Paul Francis encouraged us. He wrote, take courage. He will come for you. Trust him. Cheer up. So let us truly become the family that God calls us to be. If it is to imitate the Father, if it is the call for the younger son to repent, for the old, older son to be more generous, whatever the case may be, let us Build family, your family, the church's family, the world's family. It was a lady this morning, it was one of the sponsors of the Confirmand. And we're sharing about the war. And she said, she raised her hand, and there were about 800 people in the church. She said, Archbishop, I don't know any person from Ukraine, but I can tell you, we are one with them. We feel with them. That is family. We can be so judgmental. Oh, he deserves it. He's in the wrong path. Yeah, or she, or they. There is a lot of pain. I think all of us, we are called to return back to the Father for whatever reason. To let the Father love us. Just picture our brothers and sisters in Ukraine and the millions who have already left the country. Migrants, refugees. The picture is horrible. Let's return to our Father. Let us inherit His love. May Our Lady of Guadalupe, who always deepened her relationship with her Son, even to the cross, give us example of commitment to be the community of faith, love, and acceptance that God is calling us to become here in this land. 
there is one Heavenly Father and all of us we are His children let's accept the Lord to give love confirm you please rise opportunity for you to renew the promises that you represented in your godparents and family that they made for you the day of your baptism. Do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? Amen. Do you reject Satan, father of sin and prince of darkness? Amen. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Amen. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated on the right hand of the Father? Amen. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, and the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? Amen. This is our faith. This is your faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Confirmant, please kneel. Sponsors, please rise. Madrinos and madrinas. You have heard the wishes, the desires, the truths that were affirmed by the confirmandee this evening. Now I ask you, do you commit yourselves to help them to grow in the faith? Do you commit yourselves to help them to be closer to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior? Amen. Do you commit yourselves with your very lives to give witness to the values of the Gospel? Amen. May the Lord in His mercy be your reward. Thank you. Thank you, Savior. Confirmate and close your eyes as we pray for you. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be your helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding Give them the spirit of right judgment and courage. Give them the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Just before they receive the Holy Spirit, let us all say three times, then, Holy Spirit, then. Then, Holy Spirit, then. Then, Holy Spirit, then. Then, Holy Spirit, then.
with a gift of the Holy Spirit.
finances. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. to the Lord, trusting in his goodness and mercy. That your Son in glory may send the Holy Spirit to the church, that we may be the sacrament of unity and peace for the whole human race. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That all those who hold public office will be enlightened by the Holy Spirit to make decisions that uphold the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That your exalted Son will help those in distress, free those in captivity, heal the sick, and by your blessings give joy to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That those being called to priesthood and or religious life Recognize the voice of the Good Shepherd and follow Him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That these sons and daughters, now confirmed by the gift of the Holy Spirit, will go out and give witness to Christ by their lives, built on faith and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That our deceased brothers and sisters nourished with the body and blood of the Christian Christ, may be raised up at the last day. Today we pray especially for Desmond Oliver, Freddy Rodriguez, and Christian Slav. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Those newly confirmed, Stand. It's really confirmed. Turn around. Let us 
show of affection. my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of goodness for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the cause of Church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting to the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that free from disordered affections, they may so build with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. <laughs> Holy Lord, 
the fun of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them that you form, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of We celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Gustavo, Michael, Gary, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, 
We may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but look at the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of Christ the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, brother. To take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, to take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, to take away the sins of the world, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for just a couple of minutes. Reverend, most Reverend Bishop, the Church of the Good Shepherd is one parish and two communities uh, here in Shirts and Immaculate Conception, our mission in Marion. And we have uh, uh, many of our brothers and sisters from Mary who have come because um, they have somebody who said they being confirmed today. And um, we are happy to be one family. You complete our sense of family by being here present with us. Your, your homily um, made it even more clear to me how what a grace it is to have you, to have a chief shepherd of our uh, family of Happy Church in the area of San Antonio with us and um, seeing you with us and seeing the community the newly confirmed uh, and then we have for example Kate Lanny playing the flute and then we have also the, you know the bass you know Don and uh, Rosemary playing the bass in the, in the back and we have started this uh, the two screens that have allowed us to and they have been a blessing for us to bring more life uh, in the sense of the audiovisual effects uh, you know, enter through all of our senses. So and we have more volunteers to uh, do the media ministry and the, the mass being recorded. So we are, we are proud of who we are and we, um, we are thankful to you for coming uh, together with your MC, Ethan Ramon. Uh, so thank you, thank you so much for making it so special for us. Archbishop Gustavo has many uh, confirmations among many other uh, duties that uh, call upon him. Today he had a confirmation in Holy Trinity Parish with 75 
uh, you know, kids being confirmed. Ours was one of the smallest, but a very juicy group, very, very, <laughs> very incompetent. <laughs> and it amazes me how Archbishop, you know, with all his activities and all his duties, you know, he, that, that um, uh, zeal and that energy that uh, can only come from the Spirit of God, you know, he's like, like on tiring, and he's, uh, what you transmitted so much uh, joy and uh, it's as, as if this this was your first mass of the day. So thank you for again for being that such a good mentor for me to to do the same. Don't forget that we are beginning our mission, our Lenten mission. Um, so with all the masses tomorrow, uh, Father Roger Keeler is coming to lead the, the the mission, and then every evening we're having our presentations on this, the, the theme of the mission is synodality. So. First night being humility, the topic being humility. The second one, Monday evening at 6.30, it's uh, humility, humility, receptivity. On Tuesday, we're having conversion as the theme, same time, but uh, seven priests will be in attendance to hear our confessions, your confessions, I already did mine. Um, <laughs> but uh, your confession, yes, it is. <laughs> The very, the very first week, I think, and they have to go again. <laughs> and, um, and so, if you haven't gone to the Sacrament of Reconciliation, it's a great opportunity to do it. And it's, you have the option to not go with me, but you know, you have six other options there. And then on, we'll end on Wednesday with the theme of new vision. New vision, hopefully for yourselves, for the church, for our parish. Followed by social. So I hope you I hope to see you again several times this, this coming week. Bless you. Before the final blessing, it's just gratitude in my heart. Every time that I am able to call to parish to meet with the people of that specific community, in this case, the two communities, building one heart, one spirit. Um, this is just a joy and gratitude to the Lord. So we are very grateful to those who help you, newly confirmed, to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And thank you for your prayers. May the Lord help us continue on. And I will teach you something very simple, but that is one word. But this word should get deeper and deeper in our hearts and our minds. And that is the word peace in sign language. We need peace. The world needs to be at peace. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.